In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. First of all, I want to uh, congratulate uh, the uh, young people who were confirmed last night. Uh, Bishop Skelba was here, and he confirmed 102. And if you uh, smell very carefully, you can still smell the um, chrism. He got it all over their hair, and he kind of <laughs> got it on their faces and around the sides of their heads. And boy, there was chrism all over the place last <laughs> night. It was a wonderful ceremony, and they really got confirmed. We rejoice in the risen Lord who dwells among us. Through the Holy Spirit, we too shall see the Father who sent him. As baptized believers who have put on Jesus Christ, we inherit a place within God's holy city. In this water, we are renewed once again in his everlasting inheritance. So let us bless the Lord for the gift of water as together we sing the Gloria. Let us pray. Amen. 
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that we relieve, relive in remembrance, we may always hold in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia of Gentile or, or, excuse me, origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us, have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The responsorial psalm can be found at number 66. May God bless us in his mercy. Number 66.
These visions of the book of Revelation continue today. Today, the centerpiece in the vision of John is uh, a new Jerusalem coming down from the heavens. To the Jews, Jerusalem, but specifically the temple, was the place where heaven touched the earth and God touched his people. And so in this vision, it isn't just the temple. In fact, there is no temple. The people in Jerusalem are so holy that this beautiful, transformed, recreated Jerusalem comes down, not just as a symbol for the Jews, but for the whole world of God coming down and being with us. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory For the last three weeks, we've been reading passages from John's Gospel that took place just after the, um, the Pas Passover meal that he celebrated with his disciples. They went out of the upper room, went down out of the city and down into the valley, uh, and then came up the other side and could see the lights of the city as they gathered around in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. He who believes in me will have everlasting life. And then he says to them, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives it to you, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Throughout the Old Testament, there are clues that someday, in some way, God's covenant will be expanded not just to welcome the descendants of Abraham, but all the people of the world. Beginning with the book of Genesis, as Abraham and Isaac heard the promise that all nations will be blessed through their offspring. The early Christians came to believe through their experience of the teaching and life of Jesus, including his crucifixion and resurrection, that these promises would be enacted through the church. It was not clear to them, however, how such a world mission would be enacted. Proof that Jesus did not leave, proof that Jesus did not leave for them a detailed 12-point plan it was even less clear that bringing the message of Jesus to the world would entail a break with their fellow Jews. We, on the other hand, tend no longer to wonder that even the Gentiles could be saved. But then, when Peter recounted that the Holy Spirit had come to Cornelius, a Roman soldier, and his family, the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even among the Gentiles. Some of the first to respond to Jesus and then to Peter's teaching in Galilee were not Jews. And that early Christian community had to learn how to deal with it. For example, Cornelius and his family, Cornelius was a centurion in the, Roman, in, the, in the Roman army. They lived in Caesarea Maritania, the Roman garrison city, and the home of the Roman emperor Pilate. Scholars think that Cana and in Galilee, a pagan Canaanite town, where Jesus worked his first sign of turning water into wine in John's Gospel was noted by John because there was an early Christian community there. They also point to the parable of the Good Samaritan and the Samaritan woman at the well as scriptural nods to the early Christian communities throughout Samaria, that area that was long frowned upon and looked down upon by the Jews. Still, Peter's shocking action had to be explained to his fellow Jewish Christians, and their response was wonder mixed with puzzlement. Then God, has given even to the Gentiles repentance that leads to life. Something new had broken on the face of the Christian community, and not everyone was on board. The church met in Jerusalem to make a decision on how the Gentiles should be welcomed into the church. 
with the basic issue being whether they would have to choose, would have to follow the law of Moses just as every Jew did. Some Christians stated it this way, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. What we tend to forget is that this position made sense according to all the clearest claims of scripture and tradition. This letter that's mentioned in our first reading had to be an extraordinarily controversial document. It, it meant a, a change that was completely against what the Jews thought was going to happen. The church as a whole decided in what today is called the Jerusalem Council not to require Gentiles to follow all the laws of Moses, but to adhere only to certain restrictions regarding sexual practice, idolatry, and food. This decision seems logical to us today, even the way it has always been today, though in reality it reflected a decision that wasn't easily made or easily obeyed. What the early church came to understand, though, that if Christ was for all, Christ would need to be made available to all on the same terms. There's no first and second levels of Christians. There's no better or worse Christians. All had to come to Christ on the same terms. It was not simply a practical decision, but the reality of God working and speaking through the church. In today's reading from the book of Revelation, God's vision of the New Jerusalem includes the Jewish ministry of the temple with the provocative newness of the Christian understanding. John reports, I saw no temple in the city, for its temple was the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. The temple grounded in the locality of Jerusalem, was now spiritualized to indicate the divine home of all people. The Gospel of John reflects elements of this vision when it says, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. The original Greek of our Gospel today says it a little bit more like we will come to them and make our dwelling with them. We will eat and drink. We will sleep and work. We will make our dwelling with them. God will be all in all. The new temple, the new Jerusalem, will be with each and every person, regardless of where they came from or where they once dwelled, because God will be with them. The church, experiencing the salvation of God in its midst, began to live out a promise, now made new. So, on this sixth Sunday of Easter, two Sundays before Pentecost, here are some questions. How is God doing something new here in our midst today? Are we excited about these changes? Or do we complain about it because it upsets our routine? Who do we separate out as having no place in our Christian gathering? Gays, undocumented immigrants, ex-convicts, and sex offenders. There are over 2,000 African Americans here in Fond du Lac. 
and they don't come here. Do they have a place here with us? In what way do I experience the wonder of God living, eating, breathing, working, all and all in me, even now, as vividly as his presence is described in the scriptures? Those are questions much like the questions that the early church grappled with in our readings today. Can we grapple with them too in our own day, in our own circumstances? And what will we decide? Please rise. Throughout the Easter season, we use the creed as as it appears in the baptismal rite, as it appears in the uh, confirmation rite. We uh, celebrate it in a way that we need to respond. And so I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his empty works? and all his empty promises? Do Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, who rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, the faith that we teach our children by word and example, the faith that we are proud to profess. As sisters and brothers of the risen Lord, we come to our Father with our concerns. Our response is, risen Lord, hear us. For the church, may we always be welcoming to those who seek to join us, we pray. Risen Lord, hear us. For the peace promised by Jesus Christ, that it'll become a reality in our war-torn world, we pray. Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. For all who defend life, may they define the the necessary strength and courage to continue despite great challenges, we pray. Risen Lord, hear us. For those who were recently confirmed in the faith, may they grow to love and serve God and others more each and every day, we pray. Risen Christ, hear us. That we may provide a community of love and support to all, especially those who struggle most to find a place where they feel safe and whole, let us pray. Risen Lord, hear us. For all who have died, especially for Ronald Henning, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Charlie Van Vliet, Lester E. Kirst, Bob Pittler, Ann Sadowski, and Elisa Sadowski, and for all our personal petitions, we pray. Risen Risen Lord, hear us. God of peace, hear our prayers and relieve us of our fears that we may be reflections of your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation song is number 729, Prayer of Peace, number 
Pray then, sisters and brothers all, that these gifts that we are, these gifts we offer, may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise the glory of God's name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you even more gloriously when Christ Jesus our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymns of your glory, as together we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The Eucharistic prayer I'd like to use is a church on the path to unity. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. For by word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from many people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. You love us, the human race, and through your Son, you are present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On that day before he was to suffer, on that night of the Last Supper, he took the bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for the many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor upon this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice that Christ has handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church here of Holy Family and Fond du Lac, of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and southeastern Wisconsin. Renew us by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our bishop, the whole order of bishops, in a, that in a world torn by strife, we, your people, may shine, shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles, with the martyrs, with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. That prayer of unity, spoken in countless languages, taught by parents to their children, who in turn teach them to their children and their children and their children. And so at our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father. Father. this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, today we know you say it to us. I leave you peace, it's my peace that I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we. He invites us. He calls us by name to share with him not only in this holy meal, but in his everlasting heavenly feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Year of Faith, our theme tonight is Baptism, the First Sacrament of Initiation. We hear in the book of Romans, are you not aware that we who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? St. John portrays Jesus' death as his glorification, the shedding of his human limitations while still remaining human. Baptism into Christ is a life long commitment to shedding one's human limitations of sin and selfishness. The ritual of immersion for the celebration of the sacrament shows most clearly the baptism into Christ's death. The person who is baptized goes under the water and is raised up again. The ritual of pouring water shows the cleansing effect of the sacrament. Whether it is an infant brought for baptism by parents or an adult coming forward to be baptized at the Easter Vigil, baptism is more than the personal experience of the individual and his or her immediate family. Baptism is an event for the whole church, for the whole parish. The one who is in who is baptized is initiated into the living body of Christ and therefore becomes a brother or a sister to us all. The baptized person takes responsibility for living as a member of Christ's body. And Christ's body, us, the church, takes responsibility for the development of the newly baptized person's growth in faith and virtue. That's the point of having a sponsor at baptism. This is taken from the Catholic Catechism, part two, chapter 15. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament. Pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our celebration here has ended. Let us go forth and share it with the world. Thanks be to God. And our closing song is number 520, All the Ends of the Earth, number 520. All the ends of the earth. All you creatures.